This is the story and documentation of how I found out I have cancer. Just a warning for this video, we're gonna get a little bit TMI. Just, this is your warning. <laughs> In September of 2022, I discovered that I had a small bump on the bottom of my left foot. Like I thought maybe it was a wart, but that it would go away. So I really was not concerned when I first found it on my foot. I googled like planters wart on bottom of foot or something and the pictures that came up were very similar to what it looked like I had. Google said that these usually go away and it takes it can take up to two weeks to several months to go away so I really wasn't concerned. Fast forward to December 2022, that's when I started to notice that it was painful. And so that was the first time that I definitely, it raised concerns for me. It never hurt to walk or run. I was doing everything. I was going to the gym every day. Um, if I wore comfy shoes, it was like it wasn't even there. And then sometimes I would wear shoes and it could bother it sometimes but it was if i stepped very specifically so again i was i was concerned in the sense that i was like i'm gonna eventually have to address this probably but i didn't think it was gonna escalate i thought okay this is something and occasionally it hurts i'll figure it out later i have a lot on my plate right now i don't really want to deal with that i think another reason for me not being proactive in seeing a doctor is kind of I have like a lot of embarrassment around that and sorry, I, don't, I did not think I was going to cry. That's so silly. Anyways, <clears throat> as I was saying, I think that I had and still do have a lot of embarrassment around seeing the doctor when I have a problem. I really don't like the idea that something's wrong with me and I know that sounds stupid but I think that especially because it it's on my foot and that's just really gross <laughs> uh to me and I didn't want to talk about it and I didn't really want to go through the hassle of having to schedule appointments I'd only ever scheduled one doctor's appointment for myself without like my parents involved and it was very intimidating to me and so I wanted nothing to do with the healthcare world. I didn't want to make something that I thought was a not a big deal. I didn't want to make it into a big deal. But I would say January, February is when it started to get bigger to the point where I could feel it when I was walking. It wasn't painful still when I walked, but if I was barefoot, it would hurt and if I was on hardwood floors, it would be painful. And so I knew again that this is something I would be, I should be concerned about. But again, I just had like this mental block, a complete self-limitation of scheduling a doctor's appointment or even telling my parents about it in the first place. I finally told those who are close to me, like my friends, just on a random night, um, I ended up telling them like, oh yeah, my foot has been hurting for the past six months. <laughs> um, and they were definitely like, girl, what? Why are you not addressing this? And I was like, yeah, I'll go to the doctor eventually, but I think it's fine. I wasn't telling anyone that it was getting bigger. I wasn't telling anyone that it was getting more painful. I was downplaying it again because I was so embarrassed of the fact that it was on the bottom of my foot and just all of that. I was playing outside. I was going on runs, runs <laughs> um, sometimes. I was still going to the gym every single day or when I could. And yeah, I was completely ignoring <laughs> the fact that I was pretty much in pain anytime I wasn't wearing shoes. Yeah, I was completely neglecting that it could and ignoring the fact that it could be something more and that it was becoming something more.
but basically around summer it started to get even bigger most people knew that like oh yeah isabel has something wrong with her foot she won't see the doctor like it became like kind of this joke i finally at the end of the summer of service program went to my mom and i was like okay mom i do think that i need to address this like i actually need you to call the doctor right now so i ended up getting an appointment in august for the foot doctor went in there they looked at it they were like oh this this is pretty big this is pretty interesting i think we're gonna need to do an mri so i ended up about two weeks later or a week later actually in september getting an mri scan the mri results were basically like we actually don't know enough um the mri can't give us everything we need to know so we're gonna schedule you with an onco oncologist and you are gonna have to get a biopsy because there is a potential that this may not be benign. And at every step of the way, I was getting more and more like, oh wow, this is like getting bigger, this is getting more intense, but um, I would always just be like, okay, they're saying it could, it may not be benign, it's probably benign. They ended up giving me the biopsy report, which basically said that they're not sure. They couldn't get enough information, um, so they have to send it to a lab to have specialists look at it. Basically, the the doctor or the nurse ended up calling me and she was like, that lab report is basically saying that it's still inconclusive. We still don't know what's what it is. We know it's a sarcoma, but so it is a tumor but like we don't know if it's benign or malignant so there the nurse was like in the morning at 7 45 a.m or having a panel with um what are they called like pathologists or whatever cancer specialists to go deeper and find out if it's benign or malignant and that they said that they would call me as soon as that was over i have been pretty chill about it and try not to get too worked up, trying to stay stress-free. Right on my way to class at 2 p.m., they call me and they're like, they are going to assume that it is not benign. And so they're assuming that it's a malignant tumor and they're trying to find like more of the specifics, I guess. Um, but yeah, at this point, I'm sitting here and that's all I know. And I have an appointment for next week to go get a CT scan of my chest to make sure that it's contained within my foot and not spreading to be any cancer like in my lungs or anything. Yeah, so I'm really praying and hoping that it remains just a tumor within contained within my foot that it hasn't spread so with that being said let's go right on into um my journey from here The results um, of today's appointment, which I haven't really processed alone yet, I'm sure that will come, but basically um, I have to get my foot amputated. <laughs> it's called a ray and basically they're going to take like two toes, but my foot is going to look so ugly and for the rest of my life I'm just going to have like the ugliest feet ever and so whatever. I'll get through it. I just won't go barefoot on the beach for a, lo a long while and I won't really look at my feet very much. I'll just wear a lot of shoes. Um, so we'll see. The surgery has been scheduled for next week, so a week from tomorrow. Um, and I'm just ready for this all to be over and just going with the flow. Yesterday I had my appointment. And I didn't film very much because 
I just got nervous and stuff. And basically the doctors are saying that I'm going to need to get my foot amputated. So I spent the rest of the day kind of processing that information and I'm still processing that information, but I'm doing relatively fine, all things considered. <laughs> I don't really know how to tell people, but I'm gonna try to tell people before the surgery, so ever my friends and family are just not like, what? <laughs> what happened yesterday? You got surgery? But yeah, that's my update, and I'm trying to stay positive and find meaning in it and just continue life. Something that I think is really important is finding meaning in all of this. Just the other day in class, we were talking about this psychologist who wrote a memoir about his experience in the concentration camps during the Holocaust and how he survived by finding meaning in everything. In no way is my situation comparable to that, but I do think that I'm taking this as kind of a reset in my life and re-evaluating like okay what is what is the meaning of this what's Bahala trying to tell me in all of this and I don't necessarily think that everything happens for a reason but I do think that there can be meaning and we can find purpose in the random things that happen in life too and it can help us reflect so that's what I'm trying to do right after I had received these results I went to the gym, which is just a funny thing to do after you hear that kind of news, but I just wanted to be alone. And I saw my cousin who I haven't seen at this gym ever. And I told him, which was really kind of random. I just told him and he just gave me a big hug. It just made me realize that, okay, through all of this, I think connecting with family and like really relying on friends is going to be huge for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why not why this happened, but it's something that I can find purpose in is like making sure that I'm relying on my family and asking for support and reconnecting and deepening those relationships. Also, I don't want to seem like I'm being super positive, like fake in a fake way. When I heard the news, I was like trying to be really strong. And when the doctor left, like my mom and I just started crying and my dad was there and she just hugged me and I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> like, what is the test? Why am I getting this test? So I'm definitely having my moments of like freaking out, but I'm not like sad and I'm not like angry. I'm just having to process everything. I've been getting the sweetest messages from friends, family and stuff. And I feel very loved right now. I really do feel like we're given these tests and finding the things that can come out of it that are positive is really the only way that you can kind of cope with these things like humor and the love that I feel. I think just being very blessed and seeing all the positivity that's coming out of it is just so much better than thinking about this as like a sucky time. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have the beautiful words that we have in the Baha'i faith about tests and healing and illnesses like it would definitely seem more hopeless or random or meaningless and so to have yeah to have Baha'u'llah's revelation is really healing and keeps me sane it is officially midnight which means I'm not allowed to eat anything I can have water black coffee and tea but I'm not planning on having anything but water I have to be at my surgery at 7.30 in the morning, which means I have to get up at 6, shower, get cozy clothes on, and then head out. I feel like I can get some sleep. I'm not too anxious or anything. Good morning. 6 a.m. Here's my hospital outfit. Super cozy.
some people wake up crying, but like, I'm chilling. Why? Because what, what is there to cry, cry about? This is pretty fun. The doctor showed up at my class and I was, I was like, what, what the heck are you doing here? <laughs> Don't take me away right now. I'm in the middle of a midterm. <laughs> I think it would be really fun to text people right now. <laughs> I'd be like, Sup, man? I just came back from crazy town, bro. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even hear them count down or anything. They did not. I was not included in that. I was trying to say a prayer. Oh, yeah. But the last thing I said was... You are in, sedated, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Is there any remover of difficulties was the last thing I can remember saying. Yeah. So God is on my side. <laughs> it's annoying because intellectually... Yeah. I know I'm... I'm... I'm tripping balls. <laughs> why are you saying that? Where would you have gotten that? I don't phrase? know, man. That's not even an appropriate thing to say. Don't no. say that. No. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Man, I gotta pee. Oh. I can't even right now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's five o'clock and I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> Mama's here. That's my foot. The cancer has been removed and I'm just chilling now. So, yeah, gonna go home soon, tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> spend the night I got my little guy here I got a nice blanket and gonna do whoa, gonna do lots of Instagram and Netflix and sleeping I'm very tired got dad now say hello dad <laughs> so many kind sweet messages today I feel so loved and I think yeah, that's just where my mindset is right now. I was so loopy, so I'll put a, a few of the funniest clips, but might have to make that its own standalone little thing, because that was, I only remember some of it, and then the rest of it, I can't remember it all. Also, I left over dinner, and that's embarrassing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you will... Put the update is that it is currently only 10.30 p.m. And I've been in and out of sleep since 9 and it feels like it's 9 or it feels like it's 1 a.m. in the morning, but it's only 10.30. And I was just drifting off to sleep when I realized that my classes my time slot to register for my classes for next semester was at 4 p.m so now i'm going on at 10 30 p.m to register for my classes <laughs> Thank you.
I just want to be in my own cute clothes and my own underwear. Okay. So you did say what I thought. <laughs> Although the hospital drip, the, you know, it is patterned. I'm all changed into my fit again and we're going to go home. And dad made friends with all of the nurses, so now they all know us. Of course. <laughs> So on Monday, I ended up passing out from low blood sugar, and this is probably because I hadn't really been eating very well, and I was very dehydrated, even though I thought I had been getting enough water. So this is me ending up back in the ER. I was so tired and so hungry. This was not a fun day. I was going to start on my healing journey video, but... I guess I'm not he ready to get healed yet, so we're back at the cancer center because my foot is apparently not healing properly. Well, they're not sure yet, but they want to make sure that it is, but they're kind of worried about it, so we're back here to undress it, check it, check it out, and have the nurses see it. And I guess we're still in the um, procedure process. <laughs> 